Unsurprisingly, there are numerous movie and TV references peppered throughout the game of Skyrim. The quest, A Night to Remember, is an homage to the movie The Hangover and sees you travel around Skyrim looking for your drinking buddy Sam. One down, my friend, one down. As well as cleaning up all of the problems you created on your bender the night before. I see. So you don't remember fondling the statuary then? I don't think so. Star Wars gets its own little nod with this skeleton seen hanging upside down in the Bleak Coast Cave. On the floor below him is a sword. If only this adventurer could have used the Force. Although the Game of Thrones TV series didn't start until after Skyrim's release, the Song of Ice and Fire books were likely being read by its developers and they snuck in House Lannister's words. The Silver Bloods pay their debts. You have my thanks. Bethesda was also approached to make a Game of Thrones game, but turned it down to instead work on Skyrim. So just maybe that's the reason for this line. Tons of other NPCs' dialogue is also taken right out of movies, such as the souls found in Soul Can, quoting Vigo the Carpathian from Ghostbusters 2. Death is but a door, time is but a window. I'll be back. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Aethys of the Companions will tell you he joined the group for Fortune and Glory, friend. Fortune and Glory. A reference to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and if you travel with the ghost of Lucy and Lachance, he will sometimes make another Star Wars reference. There is a disturbance in the void. Drunks and bandits will often utter Hit the one in the middle. A piece of advice given by Paulie in Rocky IV. To waste my time trying to train a no good loser like you, you bum! The game is also packed with the Lord of the Rings references, such as Moira the Hag Raven, who will quote Gollum as you try to take a precious wedding ring from her. The giant tree in Whiterun, called the Gildergreen, is dying. A similar fate to that of the White Tree from Return of the King, and after the battle for Whiterun, Hadvar or Raloff makes a reference to Legolas and Gimli's ongoing competition to see who gets the most kills. I'm pretty sure I killed more than you. I was counting. I myself am sitting pretty on 43. In Ivarstead, there is a woman named Temba Whitearm, her name being a reference to the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Darmok, where one of the often repeated phrases is Temba, his arms wide. Most players have never noticed that the Thieves Guild have scattered helpful markers on buildings all across Skyrim. These engravings are called shadow marks, and they all have various meanings from warnings of danger or escape routes to locations of fences and loot. Keep an eye out for them in Riften and Whiterun in particular, but they can be found all over the map. Located just inside a cave near White River Watch is a bandit named Ulfur the Blind, sitting at a table enjoying his favorite book. In Fort Dunstad, there's a room in the main area that seems to be a latrine. On a stone shelf beside one of the toilets is some reading material and a potion of True Shot, presumably to help the bandits make less of a mess. Briar Hearts, a high-ranking Forsworn, who have had their hearts removed and replaced with a Briar Heart, hence the name. If you manage to pickpocket one of them, you can steal the Briar Heart instantly, killing them. Even more creepy than stealing someone's heart right out of their chest is Skyrim's Death Room. While not really something that was intended for the player to find, the Death Room is filled with corpses of non-playable characters who have died during your adventures. Even weirder is that some of the NPCs will actually be walking around. Although the room has openings at the ends of its corridors when you walk through them, you're dropped back into the middle of the room, trapped in the endless loop that is a nudie hell. <laughs> And speaking of creepy, did you ever notice that the giant statues that line the steps as you're entering Sovngarde in the main quest actually rotate to look at you as you descend? I'm sure most of you already know about the notched pickaxe that can be found atop the throat of the world that is a little nod to the creator of Minecraft, Marcus Notch Person. But that's not the only game Skyrim plays tribute to. In the Grand Hall of Volkiha Keep, 
there is a display case containing a hag raven's claw, a saber cat's eye, a dangerous heart, a dog's rib cage, and a gold ring, similar to the items Simon Belmont must collect in Castlevania II to defeat Dracula. During the quest, Proving Honor, the companion Farkas will say to you, It's a secret to everybody. A phrase that was popularized by the Legend of Zelda series. Even Pac-Man finds its way into the Elder Scrolls universe found on the shelves of Endon's house in Markath. Directly south of Markath is a stone bridge that when you approach it for the first time, you'll see three goats. Upon looking under the bridge, you'll find a dead troll, a reference to the children's story, Three Billy Goats Gruff, and a similar reference was also found in the previous Elder Scrolls game, Oblivion. There are other long-running Easter eggs in the Elder Scrolls franchise as well. If you're a long-time fan, you might have heard of the Fishy Sticks meme before. This was an inside joke on the official forums that started in 2001 and evolved to a point when new members of the forums would receive Fishy Sticks as a kind of initiation. Bethesda found this very amusing and have put references to the phenomenon in their games dating back as far as Morrowind. Skyrim's reference comes from Sheogorath during the quest, The Mind of Madness. I'm busy doing the fish stick. It's a very delicate state of mind. This whole scene with him having a feast in the forest is also a reference to Alice in Wonderland. Why is the raven like a writing desk? <laughs> Another long-running easter egg is Maik the liar. Maik knows much and tells some. Maik knows many things others do not. He's shown up in Elder Scrolls games since Morrowind. While the things he says might not make much sense without context, he's actually introduced to provide commentaries about the Elder Scrolls series and often what's new with this game. For example, when he says, Maik carries two weapons to be safe. What if one breaks? That would be most unlucky. He's talking about the introduction of dual wielding within Skyrim. Too much magic can be dangerous. Maik once had two spells and burned his sweet roar. And this is about now being able to dual wield spells. Also, sweet rolls in themselves are a long running joke in Bethesda games, including Fallout 3. Sign up now and prepare for the future. Unsurprisingly, Skyrim has also received its own share of references and Easter eggs, mainly all around one particular quote. I used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee. In Crisis 3, there's an achievement title that rewards the player for wounding a cell operative with an arrow to the knee. Guild Wars 2 contains a skill titled Crippling Shot that prior to its second beta weekend had a description that read, Shatter your foe's dreams of becoming an adventurer with a single arrow to the knee. In The Witcher 3, the Black Infantry Archer Gwent card's description reads, I aim for the knee, always. Even Disney World have gotten in on the mean with this image. The far right sign reads, used to be in Cubert, then took an arrow to the knee. That's all the Easter eggs we have time for today, but there are a ton more to be found. So head on over to skyrim.gamepedia.com to find out even more and let us know what your favorites are. This has been Dash for Curse saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.